Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Now we are learning the chapter Human Health and Diseases. In the previous video, we learned immunity in detail. So today we are going to discuss a disease that is affecting the immune system. That is immunodeficiency disease, which is an infectious disease, nothing but AIDS. The full form of AIDS is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. That is, we are acquiring over a lifetime deficiency of our immune system. Deficiency means what? Our immune system is not able to function as normal. And syndrome. Syndrome means collection of symptoms. So because of the immune deficiency, we fall sick quite often or we are susceptible to many infections around us. So we get a lot of symptoms, one after the other, different infections. So it's collectively called as syndrome. So uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS is actually caused by a virus. The name of that virus is human immunodeficiency virus. But its uh, short form is HIV. So there D is not there. But when you are writing the expansion, it should be human immunodeficiency virus. Also, always I have seen children making mistake. They tell HIV and AIDS lucidly with the disease as well as the causative agent. But clearly understand AIDS is the disease and HIV is the virus causing disease. Not HIV is not a disease. Another thing, when you write AIDS, it is a uh, an abbreviation so you have to write capital letters now uh, as I mentioned the HIV it was the infection or AIDS was first reported in 1981 in Los Angeles in a homosexual man and in India it was reported first in Chennai so initially we thought it would create a lot of havoc among uh, populated uh, in countries like India or in the continents like Africa since we took a lot of awareness measures in the governmental level and by non-governmental organization, we could create awareness among people and we could uh, reduce the occurrence of this disease. So, uh, as I mentioned, HIV is a retrovirus. Retrovirus means what? A virus with the RNA as the genetic material. So, we know usually a cell has three entities, a cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus but when it comes to virus they don't have a cell then what do they have instead a protein called called a capsid made up of individual units called capsomeos and a genetic material the genetic material can be rna or dna if it is rna we call it as retrovirus so they can infect human beings and we learn our retroviruses are used as a vector in biotechnology also because of this infectious property so now let us discuss how can AIDS spread from one person to another. So there are different means by which AIDS can spread. One is through sexual contact. Another one, transmission of contaminated blood, sharing of infected needles and infected mother to child through placenta. So who all are at risk? People with the multiple sex partners in their life or sex workers are more prone to AIDS compared to normal people. So, uh, that's, that's the first or uh, main mode of transmission of this disease. Second, due to transfusion of blood. So, before blood transfusion, if blood is not purely monitored for the occurrence or the presence of HIV, there may be infection. So, it is uh, risky for people who have to undergo frequent blood transfusion. We have already come across diseases like thalassemia where frequent blood transfusion is required or patients with cancer, they have to have frequent blood uh, transfusion. In such people, the risk factor is high. Then sharing of infected needles. So once we came to know about this possibility, in hospitals now we are using disposable needles and most of the hospitals now have portable incinerators to melt the needle then and there itself to prevent the misuse. But people who are drug abusers, they might be using it in gang and they may be sharing the needles among themselves while they are using the drugs. So, since already they are in a vicious circle, there may be people having HIV infection. So, their chance of spreading is more. And the last is the infected mother to child through the placenta. So, if mother is HIV infected through her placenta, the baby may also get virus. Many people are not clearly aware of how the AIDS can transmit. 
that's the reason why AIDS patients are isolated in the society. We try, uh, try to keep them out of reach because we feel that we get infection if we go near them. First of all, we have to understand is AIDS cannot spread through casual physical contact. If I play with an AIDS patient or sit with an AIDS patient in the class or I hug the AIDS patient, I will not get the disease. It is spread through body fluids. Then naturally there will be a question, can it spread through saliva or it can it spread through sweat? No. Body fluids means it can spread through mainly blood, semen, vaginal fluid, anal fluid, breast milk, etc. At the same time, saliva, sweat, feces, urine can't spread AIDS. Okay, so uh, we should know how it is spreading from one person to another. Nowadays, we have art or antiretroviral therapy which prevents the baby from getting HIV infection even though the mother is infected. Now, let us quickly go through the structure of a retrovirus or the HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. In the center, it has got two single-stranded RNA. These single-stranded RNA are required for making double-stranded DNA. Then, these are the enzymes. Enzyme is reverse transcriptase enzyme. Then, you know, uh, apart from the genetic material, viruses have a protein coat. That protein coat is called a capsid with the individual capsomeres. It is little over in shape. Then outer to that, there is a lipid bilayer with glycoproteins in them. So this is the structure of our HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. Now let us talk about the infection of HIV. So if it happens to enter into our body through any means that we already discussed, it is going to affect our immune system. So first it is attacking macrophages. So the first target or cell is macrophage. About macrophage, lymphocytes and all we learned in the previous videos. If you have not learned that, please go and watch the video. So macrophages are first attack followed by that helper T lymphocytes. So this is a very important question for you. Which cells are attacked by HIV after entering into our body? So the first it is macrophages. Now the question is, which are the cells targeted by HIV? macrophages and helper T lymphocytes because after multiplying in macrophage only they will target helper T lymphocytes. Now how do they attack? So suppose this is a macrophage. The macrophage has got certain receptors on its surface. They are called CD4 receptors. So the receptors can bind the HIV. So once HIV comes inside the body it will go and bind with this receptors on the surface of macrophages. Now, after binding with that, the virus will induce or inject its uh, in, uh, RNA into it. We know whenever a virus is attacking a cell, its protein coat cannot go inside. Only the genetic material will go inside. So, RNA is sent inside. So, both the RNA strands will be sent inside, single stranded RNA strands. But we know if it has to multiply, it has to get incorporated with this DNA. It is not possible for an RNA to get integrated into a DNA. So what should happen? The reverse transcription. That is RNA should become DNA. So we already learned transcription is DNA making RNA. It's reverse. RNA making DNA is reverse transcription. For the reverse transcription to happen, an enzyme reverse transcriptase is required. And that enzyme who will bring? The virus will bring. Because we saw in the structure. So the virus using the its own enzyme will make the RNA into double-stranded DNA. Now that double-stranded DNA will get incorporated into it. So using an enzyme called an integrase. So when the genome of the macrophage multiplies along with that the viral DNA also multiplies. But after that large number of DNA will form. That DNA will again get converted into RNA and each RNA will make its own protein code. They have the genetic information for making so they will make one one protein code so they multiply. Suppose if it, there were 100 copies made all 100 viruses formed. So this is uh, how macrophage is acting as a viral factory. It is, it is producing large number of viruses. Now once they uh, multiply in large number, they come out of the macrophage. Now whom are they looking for? T lymphocytes. Helper T lymphocytes. What is the function of helper T lymphocytes? 
that will be helping the B lymphocyte to produce antibody. So it will go and uh, attack this helper T lymphocytes over a period of time. The helper T lymphocytes number will considerably reduce. Thereby the patient will not be able to produce antibodies and thereby acquired immunity is affected. So his immune system becomes deficient. But this is not a very immediate process. Once the virus uh, in, uh, gets inside the body for the period of multiplication for the virus, window period is there. That is, uh, it may take from several months to several years, 10 to 15 years. That depends upon the condition of the patient. Suppose the patient is already prone to serious diseases like cancer or something, their immune system is deficient. In such cases, their symptoms may appear within a few months. But for normal people, those who are getting the infection at an early youth stage, their immune system is strong, so it will take another 10 to 15 years for the symptoms to appear. Now, since they are losing their immune system or their power to resist the infectious agents, these patients will start showing recurrent fever. Every now and then they are fever after fever after fever, along with the diarrhea and uh, considerable weight loss also will be there so that these are the symptoms of AIDS because suppose we get a rhinovirus inside it can cause cold to us and as I have already mentioned if you treat or take medicine it will go off in seven days if you don't treat it will take one week that means almost the same only right why we are able to get rid of it because our immune system is working but for AIDS patient immune system is suppressed or it is getting deficient so they don't have resistance from their side so whichever infectious agent is coming and infecting us they can go to their maximum level inside their body okay so as a result mycobacteria mycobacteria are the ones causing the uh, TB or the infection with any other parasites, bacteria, virus, fungus or viruses or a toxoplasm, uh, these are all uh, can cause severe conditions in the patient and ultimately leading to death. Because there is no actual symptom about HIV. So it's like a HIV symptom. No, it's a collection of all the infectious disease leading to their death. In this case, death is inevitable. But due to this uh, retroviral, anti-retroviral therapy, we can prolong the lifetime for a little bit nowadays, but still inevitable death is awaiting them. Uh, usually the test, uh, the in infection is uh, diagnosed by a test called uh, ELISA that we learned in molecular diagnosis and uh, confirmatory test is by Western blotting. As of now, there is no effective treatment or complete cure for AIDS. So in such case, what should be our approach? Prevention. We know. Uh, suppose you are getting typhoid or pneumonia or COVID or anything. These are not caused by viruses. They are entering our body without our knowledge. That is, it's not our fault that we got the disease. Whereas, in case of AIDS, it's not like that. It is our responsibility to make sure that this virus is not entering our body or we can prevent the entry of AIDS virus. Okay. So, that's why the tagline of the AIDS is don't die of ignorance some uh, those people who are leading immoral life are actually getting prone to such diseases so it's purely their responsibility that they invited this disease so but in uh, rare cases we saw from mother to child or a uh, blood transfusion all can also happen so you should uh, when the AIDS was reported uh, the NACO that is National AIDS Control Organization of India and also NG, NGO that is uh, non-government organizations they played an important role in bringing about awareness among people especially the sex workers and the yeah, youth who are not aware of it and from the government side also they take a lot of precautions to prevent this WHO also came up with a lot of programs to uh, help or to prevent the spreading of AIDS the first thing was we know the sex, sex is the main uh, reason why it is spreading. So uh, uh, availability of condoms was made so that the people would use it and you know condoms are actually contraceptive methods. It's not only giving contraception but protect from STD. So the people were made aware of the, the need for using condoms uh, during sex. Then they were advocated safe sex or the practices and also uh, the measures were taken to prevent drug abuse among the youth or other people. Also uh, monitoring of blood in different clinics and hospitals and also the prevention of the reuse of needles. All these measures were taken by uh, the various agencies, government and WHO so that we could control spreading of AIDS to a larger extent. 
So being the next uh, responsible citizens, you should also know about the reasons of AIDS and we all have to take measures to keep ourselves away from all these kind of uh, unhealthy practices uh, which can affect our health. And at the same time, we need to be sympathetic to the AIDS patient and also we have to lead, give them a helping hand. Let's continue this in the next video. If you like my teaching, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.